This is the AW159 from Leonardo, a fifth generation, multi-mission, highly sophisticated helicopter capable of detecting and engaging land and naval targets using extremely accurate and lethal weapons. Hi, welcome to another episode of Defense Nation. I would really appreciate it if you share and subscribe to our channel. If you already have, it really does help. Thank you. In this video, we will be talking about the AW-159 helicopter that the Philippine Navy has acquired. We will be discussing its key features and capabilities and how effective it is in meeting the requirements it was built for in securing the Philippine territorial waters. Towards the end of the video, we will have an update on the status of the Navy's AW-159s. Are these now ready to hunt and engage enemy submarines? Are these already armed and deadly? Does it even pose a threat to foreign Navy submarines and surface ships? You want to know the answer? Then stay tuned until the end of the video. Please do take note that I may use the name Augusta Westland instead of Leonardo, but I mean the same. So, without further delay, here it is. It is important to note that prior to the delivery of the AW-159, the Philippines is perhaps the only country in Southeast Asia who lacks ASW or anti-submarine warfare capabilities. The fact that the country's geographic location and its proximity to the Pacific Ocean and the West Philippine Sea, it should have a means to deter and detect incursions of foreign submarines. One interesting fact about the AW-159 is that it is a fifth-generation helicopter. It means that the Philippine Navy has become an operator of one of the latest technology-packed and mission-capable helicopters in the world. And the Philippines is one of the only three countries operating this type of helicopter at the moment. The other two? The United Kingdom and the Republic of Korea. Perhaps. One of the reasons why the Philippine military acquired an ASW helicopter is to complement and extend the capabilities of its new purpose-built guided missile armed Jose Rizal class frigates built by the South Korean shipbuilder Hyundai Heavy Industries, which I will feature next time. The Philippines Department of National Defense and the Armed Forces of the Philippines was successful in its first attempt back in 20th of May 2014 to secure a winning bidder for its anti-submarine acquisition project. And on the 4th of November, on that same year, it made another attempt with the same approved budget of 5 billion 400 million pesos. Max Defense Philippines reported that there were four companies who attended the bid and offered their products. Augusta Westland with the AW159 Wildcat, PT Dergantra Indonesia or PTDI who teamed up with Airbus helicopters offered the AS565 MB Panther, Bell Helicopter Asia, and Serpenair Group with a navalized variant of the Bell 412, and lastly, the Israel Aircraft Industries, who was expected to collaborate with a helicopter manufacturer or supplier and integrate the various systems for a navalized variant. In the end, as we know, the Gustav Westland won the bidding. In 1995, the British government announced that the Royal Navy will replace its existing Westland Lynx helicopters and will purely operate using the Merlin helicopters, which is the Augusta Westland AW101. Please do take note that the former was first introduced way back in 1978 compared to the newer AW101. The designers chose a turboshaft engine LHTAC T800 to power the helicopter. LHTAC, which stands for Light Helicopter Turbine Engine Company, is a joint venture between Rolls-Royce and Honeywell. Finally, on 24th April 2009, Augusta Westland designated the future Lynx as AW159 and will be known as Wildcat to the British military service. On 12th of November 2009, the first AW-159 made its maiden flight in Augusta Westland's headquarters in Yeovil, Somerset, United Kingdom. 
The AW159 is the first helicopter by Augusta Westland to be designed inside an entirely digital environment. At the time of writing, there are two main variants of the AW159 based on the type of missions. The first one is the Army version, used for land operations, and the other is what the Philippine Navy and the Republic of Korea both have, the Navy or Naval variant, which is more suitable for maritime operations. These two variants share the same airframe, and this airframe is being manufactured by GKN Air Structures, a company that has its origins as far back as 1759, and is headquartered in Redditch, Worcestershire, England. Interestingly, the naval variant's airframe was marinized, which means it was designed to be used and has a long-term survival in harsh, highly corrosive saltwater conditions, such as, you guessed it, the sea or the ocean. Because of these, it has a greater airframe lifespan of 12,000 flight hours. To put that in perspective, that is equivalent to a total of 500 days of non-stop flights, or one year and four and a half months. Well, no one has ever flown that long anyway. The naval variant with its distinctive nose is equipped with Salex Galileo Sea Spray 7400D AISA Radar. AISA stands for Active Electronically Scan Array. This radar technology supports multiple modes that allows it to perform various tasks such as synthetic aperture radar mapping, as well as sea surface search. It provides a 360 coverage and has a range up to 320 nautical miles. And due to its sensitivity, it can detect submarine periscopes and even oil slicks and icebergs. An L3 Wasca Memex 15DI electro optical infrared mounted on its turret, which is ideal for medium altitude, covert intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance in search and rescue missions. And to be an effective on its ASW capabilities, the AW159 Wildcat is equipped with a compact folding light acoustic system, or in short, flash. It's an active dipping sonar from Thales. Dipping sonars are specialized tools used for detecting, classifying, locating, tracking, and engaging hostile submarines, as well as performing mine clearing operations. Now, let's talk about armaments or weapons. The Leonardo 159 can be armed with various munitions. Depending on its mission roles, the primary weapon for the anti-surface role is the Sea Venom ANL anti-ship missile. The Sea Venom was designed to be used in complex and cluttered light trial environments. It has a precise targeting feature. It was designed by MBDA, a European developer and manufacturer of missiles composed of Airbus, Leonardo, and BAE systems. Torpedo The AW159 was also designed to drop the Stingray anti submarine homing torpedo. The Stingray is a highly advanced, lightweight torpedo and is capable of locating and destroying fast, deep diving double-hulled submarines in the deep ocean or quiet conventional submarines in light trial environments. This helicopter can also be fitted with Martlet lightweight multi-role missiles from Thales. With the Philippine Navy's two AW-159s, each are equipped with LIG NEX-1 K745 Blue Shark lightweight anti-submarine torpedoes from South Korea. It is capable of penetrating 1.5 meter thick steel. The Blue Shark tracks and engages targets using the acoustic signature of enemy submarines. It has a range of 19 kilometers and has a speed of more than 45 knots or more than 83 kilometers per hour. According to reports, the Blue Shark torpedoes have been delivered to the Navy. So it's just a matter of time before we see this attached to the Wildcats. Rafael Advanced Defense System, a defense technology company based in Haifa, Israel, supplied the Spike and Loss 
or 9 line of sight missiles. And at the time of writing, it is known to be the longest range air to surface missile currently available for helicopters with a pinpoint accuracy and high hit probability. The spike and loss is electro optically guided and has a range up to 25 kilometers and has the ability to switch between targets while on flight. The Philippine Navy's two AW-159 Wildcat helicopters were delivered in May 7, 2019, after a delay of half a year, but in spite of these, these were officially commissioned on June 17, 2019. Commissioning is the act of placing a military equipment, in this case the helicopter, in active service. The remaining mission essential and operational trainings has been temporarily stopped due to the ongoing travel ban on all foreign nationals, so the instructors from the UK are unable to fly to Manila due to travel restrictions. Part of the training will be the all-important deck landing operations and eventual integration of the AW-159s to the BRP Jose Rizal, who recently concluded its participation from a two-week Rim of the Pacific or RIMPAC 2020 naval exercises held off the waters of Hawaii. Part of the said training will include the deeping of the AW-159's flash sonar from Thales and other sensors in conjunction with the BRP Jose Rizal. The deeping of sonar means that the helicopter is attempting to detect a submerged or submarine contact. And with this act and the successful conclusion of all the trainings, it will signify that the Philippine Navy has become a more potent adversary in the waters surrounding the country and more capable in securing its vast territory. It will have more power to engage and deter unwarranted incursions in its waters. This made our Philippine Navy a more modern Navy. If you want us to feature more military acquisitions, or if there are important things I left out about the AW-159 in this video, or things that the Navy should have ordered more of these helicopters, or perhaps bought from other manufacturers, please let us know in the comment section below. It would be great to know your opinion. If you want to see more updates and cool features of our military's latest acquisitions, and if you feel that this is your cup of tea, do subscribe to Defense Nation channel. There are a lot of things you'll find interesting. Well, that's it for now. See you again next time. And again, as always, thank you. My name is Mac, and you've been watching the Defense Nation channel. Have a nice one.